to another online service connect church it's really great to be spending this morning with you together in an online environment while we of course have these online services just a reminder that we are meeting on a sunday in person if that's something that you would like to do there's two services every sunday at connect church in the actual building um, if you would like to join those um, services in person you'll obviously need to sign up the link to which you can find in the description below this video um, before we hand over to the worship team, I would just like to dedicate this time and the service. Um, so please join with me as we pray. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you so much that we get to spend this morning together. While it might be online and it might be virtual, Lord, I just thank you so much for really just joining with us as, as we participate in this service, Lord. I pray for those that are participating from home, that are sitting at home watching this service, Lord, and I really hope that it will be a fulfilling and, and meaningful time with you, Lord. And really, I just thank you so much to those that have participated and been part of putting the service together, from the worship team, to the pastors, to those that are behind the scenes that are working during the week to make sure that we are able to have this online service, Lord. I dedicate this time to you, Lord, um, and thank you for, for the opportunity to gather together. Amen. Over to you, worship team.
Thank you so much to the worship team for that incredible time of worship. It was really powerful and we really do appreciate it. Um, we would now like to welcome Jeremy Curries, who's a guest preacher, but someone who is well known to us at Connect Church, who's going to be bringing the word of God and sharing it with us. So over to you, Jeremy. Hello, everybody. Greetings in Jesus' name. It's a privilege and a pleasure to be with you again and to share God's word with you. My name is Jeremy Curries. And I am very happy to be sharing with you on the topic of making disciples. The title of our message today is going to be Being and Making Disciples. Let's pray. Lord, thank you so much for this moment, for this opportunity to be together in your presence, reflecting on your word. Please, will you come by your spirit? Please, would you shine your light on your word? At the same time, shine your light on our hearts. Open the eyes of our hearts, Lord, that we will see Jesus more clearly from your word and that we will follow Jesus more closely from your word. For this end, we also need the power of your spirit. So fill us now so that your kingdom will come and your will will be done in and through our lives. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So will you turn in your Bibles with me? I'm going to read two passages and uh, throughout our time in the Word, we're going to be linking those passages. Both of them are very familiar. So I'm trusting that God would help us as we tread on familiar ground here, um, that we will not tread um, in such a way as to miss what God might be saying. So Genesis chapter 1, I'm going to read verse 1, verse 27 and verse 28, and then Matthew chapter 28, verse 18, 19, and 20. So let me read Genesis 1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Verse 27. So God created mankind in his own image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said, be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish in the sea and the birds in the sky and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Matthew 28 verse 18, then Jesus came to them and said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. God's blessing is on the reading of his word. Being and making disciples. I think today there's um, a lot of talk about making disciples and disciple making and traditionally, there's always been a lot of talking and thinking around discipleship. Lots of practices in our churches and in our ministries around a, an understanding of discipleship. I prefer the simple term being disciples and making disciples because I think it better captures what some might mean when they talk about discipleship. But also, I think it helps to dispel with some myths around discipleship, what it is and what it is not. So as we talk about being and making disciples today, I want to talk about this in two ways. Firstly, I want to talk about making disciples. And I want to say that making disciples starts with being a disciple. And then secondly, Making disciples leads to multiplying disciples. So let me say those two main points again. Making disciples starts with being disciples. And then secondly, making disciples leads to multiplying disciples. Let's talk about this idea of being a disciple. Being a disciple is about being a follower. Jesus called his disciples to be his followers. And the 11 disciples that we just read about in Matthew chapter 28, 
um, from verse 18, were his followers. They had been following him for at least three to three and a half years. Following Jesus is about being obedient to Jesus, but it's also about being obedient like Jesus. What do I mean? When we look at Jesus' earthly life and ministry, we see his obedience to God and to God's kingdom agenda. So following Jesus is about obedience, firstly, to God's kingdom. In fact, that's the way that you get into God's kingdom. Jesus says, repent and believe for the kingdom of God is here. We read this in Luke chapter 1, verse 14, verse 15. Turn away from your sinful ways, Jesus is saying, and submit to the way of the king. This is how we enter into the kingdom. But this is also how we continue life in God's kingdom. It's a lifestyle of being submissive to God's kingdom. Yes, but it's also a lifestyle from constantly turning away, repenting, changing the way we think. Even sometimes uh, allowing the spirit of God to change mindsets and change ways of belief so that we can submit more fully to God's kingdom and experience more of the fullness of God's kingdom in our lives. It's about obedience to a kingdom agenda in both attitude of heart and also in way of life, being a follower. But being a disciple is not just about being a follower and obeying whatever God says. Being a follower is also about being a learner. So be a follower, but be a learner. The noun in the passage that we read, disciple, it translates the Greek word methetes, methetes, first four letters, M-A-T-H, like math. And then the phrase more specifically in Matthew 28, uh, the, the phrase make disciples is actually, it's actually one word. And it's a Greek word, mathetuo. It's a verb, right? It's an action word. But both those words, I'm spelling out the Greek for the, for the reason here. Both those words have M-A-T-H, math, at its root, whether the verb or the noun. It's the same root word as in, you guessed it by, you would have guessed it by now, mathematics. And just like maths, being and making disciples is about hard learning because that's what the root word means. It means learning and particularly hard learning. But unlike maths, which mostly tends to relate to abstract concepts, right? Not so much real life. I think that's why maths, maths in particular is so hard. Unlike maths, being and making disciples is about practical steps in following Jesus in everyday concrete situations in real life. But it's hard and it requires hard learning math. There are a number of, um, of myths around the idea of discipleship, as I alluded to a little earlier on. Um, we tend to think that just like with uh, like with mathematics, as I mentioned a moment ago, that uh, discipleship is maybe about concepts and ideas or it's about core beliefs and uh, about, you know, a body of truth that we should hold on to. Now, that is certainly true, but being and making disciples is way more than that. And when it comes to being a disciple, it's not simply about getting uh, to hold on to a certain body of truth uh, or some core teachings about our faith or core teachings about our church or our ministries. But it's really about something way more. It's not simply a curriculum. It's not simply a program. It's not simply being in a three month or six week curriculum that uh, once you complete, you say, now I've been discipled. It's not simply about being in a Bible study group or small group, learning 
truths about the Christian faith. The, the thing about this understanding of discipleship, and this is where it's faulty, is that it can almost make us believe that it's something introductory. It's something that only new Christians need to know and need to follow. And once you graduate from being a new Christian, you graduate from discipleship and you move on to other things, you know, like giftedness or callings or purpose or leadership. That is a myth because discipleship is about being in an ongoing process and pathway of learning. It's about being a disciple. In fact, you never graduate from being a disciple, which means you never take the owl off the car. You are always a learner. You never pass out and become a driver. You are a learner for as long as you are a follower of Jesus. And the reality is, the more you mature as a follower of Jesus, the more you grow as a learner. The, the more you learn to mature, at the same time, you mature to learn even more. You learn to apply and you apply. And in your applying, you learn even more. You learn to follow and you follow to learn. And then you teach others to do the same. You are a learner for as long as you are a follower of Jesus. What is the, the word that the NT, the New Testament writers use? This word disciple, what is the origin of this word? Where does it come from? And why do they choose this word to describe the first followers of Jesus? Well, the word was already in use before the New Testament was written. The word disciple was used to describe the followers of a Jewish rabbi. And follow me, that term that Jesus often uses when he calls his first disciples, follow me was the invitation that a rabbi would extend to his Talmud. The Talmud is the, the, the disciple, the Jewish disciple. It was an invitation to learn, but not just to learn from the rabbi's teaching, but also from the rabbi's attitudes and lifestyle. It was an invitation to learn from the rabbi's character and the rabbi's priorities. The Talmud would follow his rabbi everywhere, really leaving his side and always watching for a teachable moment, looking to make the rabbi's actions and words and thoughts a part of their lives. This is what it meant to be a disciple in the day and time of Jesus. And this is the meaning of the word that the New Testament writers use. But it's not just about being a disciple. It's also about making disciples. And so when we think about discipleship in this way, that it's about being a disciple and making a disciple, then we begin to see how through Jesus' life and example, making disciples actually leads to multiplying disciples. And this is the second main point I want to share with us today. Making disciples leads to multiplying disciples. It starts with being a disciple, but it leads to multiplying disciples disciples. How do we how do we do this? How do we make disciples who make disciples? Well, for starters, again, looking at the, the Matthew passage we read earlier, we disciple to obey. We see this clearly in verse 20. Jesus says, teach them to obey everything that I have commanded you. We don't teach others simply so that they can learn information. We teach them to live out and to practice what they have learned. We teach others to obey, but we also teach others from our obeying. We teach them out of our obedience, not just out of our knowledge. We teach others as we have been instructed and as we have obeyed. Jesus tells his disciples, teach them Everything that I have instructed you. 
So the implication there is that the disciple is first obedient before the disciple is teaching others to obey. We, we don't just teach information. We teach out of our own transformation. We teach them to obey as we have obeyed. And this leads to a mutual growth. Because remember, you never take the owl off the car. You as a disciple maker now remain a learner. And so we are constantly growing together with those that we are discipling. It makes for mutual growth, but it also makes for mutual accountability. Now, the church that I'm privileged to be part of is really a disciple making community. And last Sunday morning, um, my nephew who was part of the church and I were sharing some prayer requests and we were praying for each other. So that was last Sunday. Then this past Tuesday, which was uh, on the public holiday, um, Freedom Day, I saw him and uh, one of the first things he asked me was, pretty much have I put into practice the things that I asked him to pray for. <laughs> so I'm looking at this child, he's 19 going on 20. I'm thinking, who are you to ask me? If I'm doing what I said I really need to do and what I need prayer for. But that is exactly the point. So I can teach him lots about the truths of our faith and about the things of the kingdom and the things of the spirit and the things of God's word. But my own obedience to Jesus is always going to be the best platform for teaching others to obey. And this is what makes it hard learning, because for me. As a learner who is now teaching others, I constantly have to seek to teach from a platform of obedience. But we don't just teach others to obey and teach them out of, of, of our obedience. That could end up being very legalistic and rigid and just workspace. We actually disciple not just to obey, but we disciple people to obey Jesus. It's about teaching them to do whatever Jesus said, whatever Jesus told us and whatever Jesus said in his word. And we know all scripture testifies to Jesus. So all of God's word. Right. And here's the challenge. We teach others to follow us as we follow Christ, as Paul would say. In his letter to the Corinthians, we invite them to follow Jesus. Maybe we doing so we inviting them to follow Jesus for the first time. But we also invite them to continue following Jesus for always. OK, so in that sense, making disciples is about calling people to convert, calling people. It's, it's about evangelism. It's about calling people to turn from sin and to turn to Jesus, but to continue obeying Jesus. And, and here's the thing about obeying Jesus. If people are not learning to follow Jesus for themselves, not based on my rules and I'm the disciple maker, so I'm showing you what to believe and now you need to believe this. If people are not learning to follow Jesus for themselves, then we have not done our work or maybe our work is not done. We must not be impressed with anything else. Whether that's regular attendance at the gathering or in this day and age, lots of views or likes or comments or subscribes. We cannot be content and impressed with anything else, whether that's their Bible knowledge or whether that's their long, beautiful prayers or their understanding of Christian culture or their use of Christian jargon. We cannot be impressed with anything other than their own obedience to Jesus because that's what we are discipling them into. We're discipling them to obey Jesus. And if they are not learning to obey Jesus for themselves in everyday life, Jesus says in your going, when he says go and make disciples, he's actually saying in your everyday going, in your everyday life, if we are not helping them right where they are, on a Tuesday afternoon or a Wednesday morning, if we're not helping them to obey Jesus in everyday life, then our work is not done or we have not done our work. But also, not only do we disciple people to obey Jesus, 
and to obey and to obey Jesus. We also disciple across people groups. In verse 19, Jesus says, in your going, make disciples of all nations. Nations in this context means people groups. And every people group has its own way of looking at the world and of living in this world. Every people group has something that reflects God's image in a very unique way. But every people group also has something that is ruined by sin. And when we make disciples among people who look like us, and if that's our only context for making disciples, people who look like us, people who think like us, people who learn just like us, or people who earn just like us, if that's the only place and the only relationships, communities in which we make disciples, then we actually rob ourselves of the beautiful opportunity of seeing more of God's image in each other. Genesis 1, God creates human beings in his image. And so all cultures reflect something beautiful of God. And as we begin to build relationships and bridges across people groups, both the disciples and the disciple makers, right? those who are being discipled and those who are making disciples will learn to be more like Jesus. And we see this in the Gospels. Jesus constantly gives us examples, pictures, models of how he encounters people from other people groups. This is something for us as South African disciples that we really need to learn. It's hard learning for us in this particular area, learning to make disciples across people groups. But we also learn from Jesus that making disciples is about discipling in community. We disciple in community. So what have we got so far? We disciple to obey. We disciple to obey Jesus. We disciple across people groups and we disciple in community. Verse 19, uh, we see Jesus say, tells his disciples, baptize those new disciples in the name of the Father and the Son and of the Holy Spirit. This is God. It's the God of the Bible. It's the God of creation. It's the God that we read about in Genesis 1. The God of Genesis 1 is a community. That's why he says, let us create. And this God, Father, Son, and Spirit makes us in his own image. So we as his image bearers are made for community. We made out of community and we are made for community. And in community, we better reflect God's image. That's why in our previous point, it's so important to connect with other image bearers from outside of our particular people groups, because they are all, we are all, not they, we are all image bearers. But as image bearers, those who have been made in God's image, those who have been made for community, Jesus then calls us to baptize new disciples into that same community. We baptize them into the community of God, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit. And as they come into fellowship with the triune God, they also come into fellowship with others who are in community with the triune God. And we disciple them into that community. So let's just think about this for a moment. For Jesus, then making disciples is firstly about Jesus making this new community of people who are connected to God, the eternal community, God. But Jesus also makes disciples in a community. He doesn't just make disciples into a community. He also makes disciples in community. In other words, he's not so much doing private one-on-one -on -one sessions like we think of counseling or therapy often, but making disciples is something that happens in community with Jesus. I mean, he had a group of disciples with whom he was very intimate and a lot of the hard learning happened in that community. Learning in community prevents us from depending on one person as if that person is Jesus to you. 
from one person as if that that person is the source of all of our growth for life and for faith and for godliness. As if one person is the source of all of our right understanding in terms of sound doctrine. No, there's a community of faith that Jesus wants us to be part of. And as we make disciples, we baptize them into this community. In our local church, we um, we are in a situation now where there, there's a a fairly a recently married couple who's relatively younger. And then there are two older married couples. And that little group has become a discipling community where the older married couples are discipling the younger married couples. And in that space, there's so much rich history, so much diversity of perspectives and experiences in marriage, joy, pain, high, low, etc. Um, and, and that, provides for such a beautiful resource it's training material right real life training material so it's not just life on life it's lives on lives it's discipling in community we also disciple holistically in verse 18 jesus says that all authority in heaven and earth has been given to him God created the heavens and the earth. That's the spiritual, the physical, and everything in between. We see that in Genesis 1. Jesus, Matthew 28, has all authority in heaven and earth. Spiritual, physical, and everything in between. And then Jesus sends his disciples out with delegated authority in all things. All things is kind of like Greek shorthand for heaven and earth. Or you could say heaven and earth is shorthand in the Jewish mind for Everything that ever is and was and will be, right? It's all things. It's this huge cosmic idea of everything that God has created. All things. We see that language come up a lot in the writings of the epistles, right? All things. All things. In all things. And and this speaks of a kind of a big picture, holistic understanding of life. And so as we make disciples like Jesus did, we should be teaching people to love God, but also to love others. Jesus says, love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. We should also be teaching them to love themselves. To appreciate who God has made them to be with intrinsic value and worth and dignity and identity and purpose because they have been made in God's image. And also just as in creation with the first humans, teaching them to love and care for God's physical creation. This is, this is all things, right? Heaven and earth. Teaching them to be mature spiritually, but also physically teaching them to be mature and discerning about spiritual things and also about earthly things, teaching them to apply the gospel, the good news of God's rule and reign in all things, holistically, to every area of life. So in our community at the moment, I'm just sharing lots of examples from just from my own life because that's the only place I can really speak from besides God's word. So a few people last year actually lost their jobs as a result of COVID, sadly. And so a lot of the conversations, the discipling conversations at the moment are centered around helping people to start and grow their businesses and encouraging and praying and prophesying and supporting and dreaming together, finding ways of helping people grow their businesses for the sake of why? So that they can be rich? No, for the sake of caring for their families and being generous to others, because if you don't have, then you can't give. And so if we want to disciple people into this big picture understanding of all of life, then they will never become fully mature disciples of Jesus who know how to follow Jesus in all things, heaven and earth. And then lastly, verse 19, we disciple to multiply. In the beginning, God created human beings in his image. Then God commands human beings to multiply his image into all the earth. In Christ, the new beginning, the new creation, the new humanity is recreated in the image of Jesus. We are the new creations in Christ. So that Matthew 28 is almost like Genesis 1 all over again for those who 
trust in Jesus. Jesus commands his disciples now to multiply his image, just like in Genesis 1, into all the earth. And how would they do that? Well, by following what he did, he made disciples and then he tells his disciples to make disciples and he tells them to teach their disciples to obey everything that he has commanded. This is multiplication. This is multiplying disciples. We don't only teach them to be disciples. We teach disciples to make disciples because this is the way of Jesus. And then we disciple from his presence. When it's all said and done, verse 20, Jesus says, surely, surely translates a quite a difficult word that basically means be very attentive and observe. I am with you. Some translations say, behold, Jesus tells us to observe his presence, to be aware of his presence. God's presence is always everywhere, but we are not always aware of his presence. In his presence, we learn from him. In his presence, we become more like him. And in his presence, we hear from him. We'll even hear who to disciple and how to disciple. So making disciples starts with being disciples. That's about being a follower and a learner. Making disciples leads to multiplying disciples. We disciple to obey. We disciple to obey Jesus. We disciple across people groups. We disciple in community. We disciple holistically. We disciple to multiply. And we disciple from his presence. Disciple making is not automatic. It's not something that happens by itself. It must be intentionally sought out. In both senses, seek to disciple someone or seek for someone to disciple you like those first disciples began to walk after Jesus and call out to him so that he turned around, adjusted the way he was going and said, what is it that you are looking for? They sought him out um, in as much as rabbis usually sought out his disciples to or, or Jesus sought out his disciples, I would say. But it's not just a passive thing. It must be actively engaged. So you can't say, yes, I am a disciple. I'm being discipled. How? Because I attend church gatherings and I listen to the word of God. So I'm being discipled. No, the Holy Spirit is doing one thing of sanctifying us. But he has human agents whom he uses, followers of Jesus, to disciple us. So there's sanctification and then there's disciple making. Disciple making requires our active engagement it's not a program it's a process that takes time and it's not easy it's a hard pathway to follow so three questions as i close key questions number one who are you discipling number two who is discipling you and number three do they know do they know that you are discipling them? Do they know that they are discipling you? Let's pray. Lord, move on our hearts by the power of your spirit. Help us to be and make disciples of Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much, Jeremy, for bringing that word. And thank you to Connect to the Connect family for spending a Sunday with us. Um, in closing, just to let you know that next week we're going to be starting a new series in 2 Timothy called For the Sake of the Gospel. So we really hope you'll be able to join us next week. Have a wonderful Sunday and have an absolutely fabulous week ahead.